so hi guys I wanted to do some of the five two practice problems for you I'm gonna do 1 6 and 13 again you want to really make sure that you uh, draw an accurate picture of these um, you know feel free I would check your picture try to make it without Desmos and then um, maybe use Desmos as a uh, kind of check so that you can see um, if it's working you know if, if it is what you thought it was so um, so let's take a look at problem um, uh, number one here okay so it says uh, find the volume of the solid obtained by rotating the region bounded by the given curves above about this uh, specified line. Sketch the region, and we'll go through all of that. Okay. So if you solve this for y, you get x to the 3 halves. Because of this 2 here on the bottom, we can only plug in positive numbers. And so... Um, kind of looks, eh, right here, let's plug in four. It makes such straight lines, I know. Okay, <laughs> so, um, if you plug in zero, you get zero. If you plug in one, you get one. If you plug in four, the square root of four is two, two cubed is eight, you get eight. So it kind of looks like a half parabola sort of thing. Okay. Now, we are looking at the region between the curve x equals 4 and y equals 0, so that's this region here, rotated about the x-axis, okay? So we are going to go from 0 to 4, pi, uh, x to the 3 halves is our curve squared, which is 0 to 4, of pi x cubed dx, which is from 0 to 4. Here, now we can just do that general antiderivative. So that's pi x to the 4th over 4 from 0 to 4. So that's pi times 4 to the 4th over 4, which is 64 pi minus 0 pi, so that's why I didn't write that part. Um, and so that is the area, uh, or the volume, I'm sorry, um, if you rotate that about. So think about it, it would look like this as you rotate it about the, that, that axis, okay? So there is problem number one. Let's look at problem number six. So first, I'm going to draw a picture for you, because you know I'm very good at that. So y equals x squared minus 1. Looks like that. Okay. We are going to look at the curve. y equals 0. x equals 0 and x equals 2. So we kind of will end up with two unique sections. Now what's really great about that is we don't have to separate them because, you know, if you think about this one here will become a positive volume region when it's spun around the x-axis. This one here will become a region when it's spun around the x-axis. So um, 
the formula itself will take care of any positives or negatives, so you don't really have to worry about that. And so it ends up just being the volume from 0 to 2 of pi times x squared minus 1 squared dx. And so we end up getting, you want to actually physically square that. So for a while, if you want to think about it, you get x to the fourth minus 2x squared plus 1. We can just take now the general antiderivative, which is x to the fifth over 5 minus 2x cubed over 3 plus x. And then when you plug in 2, you get 32 over 5 minus 16 over 3 plus 2, which is 46 pi over 15. So there is problem number 6 for you. And then I would like to do problem 13. Now this time we are rotating the R1 section about a horizontal line. I haven't really done many examples. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, about a vertical line. We haven't done many when we rotate around something vertically. So let's first talk about our inner and outer radius. Okay. So initially, you've got this section here okay but you'll notice it's a washer because look there's this little piece here that's missing okay and so we have to account for that fact that we're going to go from the outer radius to the inner radius okay so the outer radius is uh, always eight so from 0 to 2 is our y's, so this is going to be in terms of y. We're going to go uh, from 8 squared minus off this little piece here, the inner radius. Well, it's a line, but what kind of line is it? Okay, let, let's look. So our starting value for this line, the b is 0. What's our slope? Well, we're going to go up to and over 8. So our slope is 1 fourth. So our line equals y, y equals 1 fourth x plus 0, or y equals 1 fourth x. Okay? And so that's going to be 1 fourth x squared. Now, so what do we got here? Let's do some simplification. We got uh, pi times 64 minus x squared over 16. And look at the mistake I made. And let me fix it. I'm, so, uh, I'm kind of glad I made this mistake for you so I can fix it for you. This is x's. I need y's. So let me fix that for you here. So if we solve this for y, we get 4y equals x. So that has to be 4y. So that has to be 16y squared. Sorry about that. OK. So now we can just take the general antiderivative. So that's going to be 64y minus 16y cubed over 3. We're going to plug in 2. We're going to get 128 pi. And if we plug in 2 to the back, we get 128 pi over 3. When we plug in 0, it doesn't, it's subtracting 0. And so then our final answer when we get common denominators is 256 pi over 3. So there you go. There is a 
uh, problem from the Fatu practice. Get some volume practice in there. Okay, guys. Bye.